Hey guys, and welcome back. Today, we're going to be working on this pressure washer. This pressure washer I picked up uh, recently for a, a fairly good deal, I think. Maybe not that good of a deal, considering what's wrong with it, but... Um, I was in need of a pressure washer, and this one came up uh, on Facebook Marketplace, and so I went and picked it up. The pump works, everything works, it actually runs and it sprays, however, the gas tank leaks quite a bit. And as you can see, somebody attempted to, to seal it up, but it leaks quite profusely. You can see it's all around, I think somebody took this apart, oh actually, I don't know if you can see, but there's a pretty good crack right there. In any case, this gas tank is pretty much beyond repair. Now the good thing was that um, when I saw it online, I figured that it probably had the same gas tank that this engine from that Craftsman lawnmower with the bent crank had. And I checked the part numbers, I pulled the manuals, and it is the same gas tank. So basically I can just uh, pull the gas tank off of this motor, put it on the pressure washer, and uh, should be good to go. So let me get, get you set up here and we'll start pulling the gas tank off the uh, Craftsman uh, motor with the bent crank. All right, let's get started. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull off all this, uh, all the shroud and engine cover, plastic bits. All right, so it's it what I thought, a uh, little plastic clip back behind there that was hanging it up. All right, now there are three nuts here, eight millimeter. Actually, they're shoulder, bolt, shoulder bolts. There is one three eighths bolt down here. Oops, and the bushing. So now the gas tank should be pretty much free except for the line. So let's see. See if I can do all of this stuff one-handed. Okay, there it is. A 
looks pretty good. I don't see any obvious cracks or signs that anything is wrong with it, so let's go take uh, the bad one off of the, uh, the power washer now. Alright, let's get started here. Uh, I think the first thing I'm going to do is disconnect the spark plug. And then, now let's start taking it apart. has obviously replaced one of these screws at one point. One's a Phillips, and one's a flathead. Well, that was a lot easier than the other one. Still a little bit of gas in there. Clamp that, clamp that fuel line. Oh, it's missing this bolt down here and the bushing. Okay. Clearly when uh, whoever took this tank off before to try and fix the leak, they uh, forgot to put that 3 8 inch bolt back in on the bottom. So I'm looking at that fuel line in there and it's pretty cracked. I think I'm going to go ahead and replace the fuel line while I'm at it. There's no point in putting a uh, cracked fuel line back on. I don't think I can get back in there. Well, let me try. Let me get some tools. That carburetor looks like it has some gum in it. Could probably use a good cleaning. Maybe I'll do that in the spring. Alright, well, that made a mess. Let me clean that up. Alright, so two problems here. One, there is an enormous crack in this gas tank. Actually, the entire gas tank is coming apart. It's cracked from here all the way to here. And it's cracked down here. So this stuff is never going to hold. Second problem was that this fuel line it's so old that one, it's split, and two, the clamp is so brittle and old that the clamp didn't even hold it on anymore. So, 
Let me go get a new fuel line. Alright, so I want to talk a little bit about fuel lines right now. So I'm gonna, we're gonna replace this one. And, um, I don't know, MXRI. That must be the brand name. I don't really see any other markings on here. But anyway, um, a lot of small engines, even newer ones, uh, come with um, fuel lines that say uh, 30R7 or J30R7 or SAE J30R7. Um, those lines really are not rated for ethanol. Um, J30R7 lines, that, that's an SAE standard, that particular standard doesn't stand up to ethanol. It, it, it kind of dissolves over time and you can get chunks, you know, that come off the hose, the inside of the hose over time that get into the carburetor and gum up and clog up the, the fuel system. Um, so even though most small outdoor power equipment engines have that on them, it's really not the correct hose for ethanol gases. With, there is a SAE standard, it's J30R9, that does stand up to ethanol. Um, it will even do, I think it will, it, it even stands up to pure, pure ethanol, um, definitely E85, pure ethanol, and I think pure methanol too. It can be used in, in race engines. Um, it also stands up to uh, very high pressures as well. Uh, J30R7 is not rated for for uh, fuel injector, you know, high pressure uh, fuel systems. Um, I mean, we don't need that in uh, when, you know, working on small engines, but what we do need, we do need the fuel hose, hose to be able to stand up to the new uh, ethanol gases with, you know, 10%, um, you know, sometimes maybe even 15% uh, ethanol in the in the gas. Um, so that's why whenever I, uh, I don't use it for everything. J30R9 is a little more expensive than, you know, a 30R7 hose. Um, but when I'm replacing the, the hose on a piece of outdoor power equipment that may have gas in it sitting in it for you know over the over the summer or something so this is like a a power washer or a um chipper shredder or a rototiller or something like that you know something where you may not run it out of gas every time you use it because you use it on and off inconsistently through the summer you know i'll replace those fuel hoses with um j30r9 so that the ethanol you know, even when it sits in the hose, um, will not eat away at it. Now, some people might say you can install a fuel shutoff valve, which is fine, and I, I do do that, but there's always a, a small piece of hose from the, the tank to the, the shutoff valve that is always exposed to, to the gasoline. So, in that little piece of hose, you're not shutting off the gas from the tank to the shutoff valve. You can't do that unless you run it out. It's always going to be exposed. So, you know, that's that's why I use uh, this hose. It should stand up to the, the ethanol, pure ethanol, uh, and it shouldn't uh, degrade. Um, I, got, I got this. This is a Continental, I guess the part number 65148. It's a quarter inch. Uh, fuel hose. Um, I think I got this at uh, at Summit Racing. The, the price was pretty reasonable. Uh, it was um, 18 inches long, and I think it was under ten dollars. Um, you know, so that does two or three pieces of outdoor power equipment, depending on how much hose you need. Uh, so, in my case, for my personal use, it, it it's worth it. You know, to put put this kind of hose on. So, I think we need about that much off right there.
All right, let's go put that on the new fuel, fuel tank and, and hook it up. All right, all right, so here's the, the new tank and the old tank. They are identical. I checked, they, they are the same part number, so it will be a perfect fit. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to install the fuel hose first. Let me work on getting that in. Turn you back on. All right, I got those fuel lines back on. They are pretty tight, which is good. You don't want any fuel leaking out of there or them to pull off, you know, like the old one did. I also went and got the uh, the three eighths inch bolt and the the bushing for the uh, bottom bolt on the fuel tank that the uh, previous person who had been in here lost. You don't need to see me. You don't need to see me put on a, a fuel tank. I'll bring you back when I'm done. So one of the things I've always wondered is, do do these fuel tanks have a built-in screen down there? You, you can't really see it from 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 the uh, from the gas cap, and I've never dissected one so. Maybe now is the time to dissect one. What do you think? What do you think? Do you think it's going to have a screen or not? Finally got it open and the answer to the question is yes, it has a screen. Let me see if I can show that a little better. See it? So, if that's the case, then that would make one of the screen-based um, fuel filters. Let me show you what I'm talking about. The uh, fuel filters that go on the uh, non, on the engines without a fuel pump. Um, these these basically have nothing but a screen in them you probably can't see it in the video but there is a very fine screen inside this that filters the the fuel And if there is already a uh, screen in the fuel tank, then those are kind of redundant and don't really serve too much of a purpose, wouldn't you say? All right, first start. 